Hello, good afternoon. Good day, depending on the place that you are, that you're looking at us. I'm here from Argentina asking Lucia Rialtes from the School of Political Formation, or Carlos Maltekis, that is one of the schools that is mentioned or part of ALBA movements. And we continue to do seminar about 200 years of Bolivar versus Monroe Doctrine, 200 years against imperialism. And this seminar is thinking in the, in the reference of the anniversary of the 200 years of the Monroe Doctrine. And for others, it's for this is a celebration for the movement is we are trying to change the debate and to change the different models of political transformation. And we're going to talk about a structural team and the practices in general practices. And for this title, sovereignty versus dependency. And we are going to make emphasizing the, on the different models of accumulation and the contraposition of the economic plans that we are found in the two projects. For this, we are going to have in the first time a video that, that are prepared organizers by Guillermo Barreto, the Bolivar Institute, and they're going to be positioning this debate in the context on the context of the independence wars and, and the consolidation of the capitalist industrial capitalism in America and the revolution, industrial revolutions in England. Like in England, it emerged as a hegemonic power and the United States and the, and the role that the United States are having and the rest of the world in the 20th century, in the second World War II, and there is crystallized in the dependency war. And in the second time, we are going to be having Steve Ennis is going to be a professor of the economic history of political science of the Oriental University of Venezuela. And he's going to talking to us about, we're going to think about the debate is in this memory in the history of American, Latin America. And it's, it's only in the national economies reference, but in all the continent and the militant practice um, confronting imperialism. And, those, and the last exchange and the challenge is going to be open and YouTube will be utilized in this debate. We are, we're going to be asking you, uh, Steve, asking questions, doubts, and and we need to put forward to have a debate, to have a more rich debate about this team. And lastly, and this seminar is organized by Movement ALBA and and in coordination with other articulation, international articulations, like the in the Trinidad Institute and the Bolivar Institute and the and the International Assembly of the, of the Peoples. And now we're going to start this uh, this fair encounter and this first seminar. Hello, we are here in the Bolivar Square and we find a, a, a Bolivar Museum and the Freedom House of the Bolivar and the Odison in the Karaska Center, as you know, in the Bolivar Square, is part of the property of the Bolivar family, where the Bolivar, Bolivar was born. And we need to understand the logic of the thinking of the of Bolivar, especially regarding to the economic thinking, and to understand the origins of Bolivar. He was a son of a, a, a man, Adinerada family, a family that have a lot of money of Caracas, and they were distinguished by the dresses that they use in the for the dresses that they use in the churches. And from this elite is that Simon Bolivar was born. Que el primer paso. And, and Lorito Garcia, the first step to the liberation, uh, the liberation of the fifties, or the cost of living in the place of others, it's living of others. And this reflection or history is very important because for him to be able to liberate free himself and to propose an economic liberation process, yeah. but the process of liberating himself from the, his richness and his social status. 
So he reach something that is not common. Que termina dando means of these times. And is is no law because of the, his heritage of noble heritage of his family, but the, of the great actions that he made about freedom, of the freedom work that he did. Uh, because the Bolivar family was owners of plantations, owners of mines, El país. and This many important corporate means in the country. And Manelete stands saying the letter, el brillante de Personal patrimony, and he finishes in, in when he finishes in 1830 and sick in Santa Marta. He he dies with the borrowed t shirt. He has over all his fortune, all his patrimony that he inherited to his sisters. He was he gave all that to the, the Central University of Venezuela. And Bolivar always keep himself a condition of austerity life through all the process of the independence war. And he was consequent solidarity and the same with the, the army. He gave he give his own clothes to the people to give. Um, we know that Bolivar rejected any type of price of reward regarding his. I never heard any privilege. It's a safe privilege for himself. There is a letter that reveals he said Bolivar, how Bolivar sees himself and how he sees the rewards and and how he saw his responsibility to be the chief fighter regarding the state administration. Today, I had the sense of feeling to so in the budget of I wait that you corresponda. O sea, estamos hablando del jefe del ejército. We are talking about the, the leader of the, the Revolutionary Army, and he was, and he has launched, they have meetings with other people, the of the war, and he, he still has a privilege that he wants to pay for himself and he didn't want to charge to the Republic. And for, for the Bolivar, it was fundamental as an important topic of the country, that, that there was not, and there was, there was two different issues. The corruption was to be converted and the contraband. El contrabando, por supuesto, eh, lo que estaba era... Was de la República, el Teniente Venezuela. The abolition of slavery, creating more espacio para space for the people, the slave people who have rights and right to the property and right to develop the, to develop to his economic um, businesses, and in order to distribute the land. And but in essence, it is important to remember to see the property team and how Bolivar defines the property team. Bolivar believe that every person has a right to dispose and that has acquired with his work and industry work. And that's very important. It was very rich for his times because with this definition, the right uh, that comes from the work and the industry and, and that eliminates the, the concept of the 
the noble titles and the inheritance of the property and emphasizing the work and the industrial work as giving the possibility of the, to the different castes that existed in Venezuela. With the slavery and the Aboriginal people didn't have any right, the same rights as the white people. He wrote that when he said that the property, the right of property came from the work and the industrial activities. And the, maybe the most important of the construction of Bolivar in the economic dimension of en Quito sobre las minas. Es el decreto del 20 He did a proclamation. Although my this proclamation Bolivar made clear that the mines of any kind they were called they were ownership of the government of the state and they would give it in the state and possession. Lo que debe asegurarse and in this la proclamation that we be sure that the property of the mines need to be secure against any attack on against any losing of that guaranteeing that the natural resources are part of the republic and he finished saying that and it's important to promote the scientific knowledge and the mechanic knowledge and disseminate the spirit of businesses so we can reach a perfection process that will secure the riches of the state and that's very important for the economic dimension of this proclamation because Bolivar opens so many of our republics consider the richness of the natural resources in the mines and the, and the soils and oil and any other minerals. That would be a, a wealth of the state different to the American Anglo-Saxon vision if se you encontraba remember, petróleo, the, todo el mundo se that were presented, but that was, that was a agrosensor vision because it was individual property, because it was no guarantee for the state. It was, the, it was, it was guaranteed, it was a private property. Bolivar guarantee that those, the richness of the soils will be state property and it will be para the information of the collective to exploit and guarantee that that property Posterior. cannot be taken away from the people. America Latina, All the laws after the oh, Latin American oh. state property of these natural resources of the soil, and that was inspired by the proclamation of Bolivar about the mines, is one of the most important legacies in defense of the, of the national sovereignty and the guarantee of and the, the Bolivar. Bolivar, además, Bolivar, in relation for other revolutionary decisions regarding to this economic term. he broke the monopolies he fought the monopolies and, freed, and promote the freedom commission and equally and re recognize the importance of the a, a monetary a currency of the country and there's necessary to have the control to, to our currencies and finally, Bolívar fought corruption and contrabando y la and the bureaucracy. De la mayor confiscación Bolívar is the most is the major of the confiscation of the empire of the Spanish and the West Tribune with using the criteria of justice distribution. He has prepared the Potosí mines that was the symbol of the, of the colonial exploitation of Latin America and he distributed the, the lands other native people and in the of promoted Smith, and he was promoted the importance of the role of the state in the economy. Ya hablamos un poco de la visión que tenía Bolívar sobre la economía no? about the economy and the importance of the property of the ownership of the, of the soil and the established property of the Republic for the, to guarantee the dependence of the state. But that, that need to contrapart with the vision of the moral depression and to understand how it was developed along the times of the 20th century. We talk about 
uh, one of the principles and additions that were to the original Monroe Doctrine that explained that the no interest of the United States regarding that moment to mayor, justify a major in intervention of the United States in our countries. We will start with the, with the principle of Hayes. All, all the principles have the names of the state secretaries or presidents that promote them. The principle of Hayes about the Panama Isthmus. It was important. Bolivar saw the importance of the Bolivar gave to the Isthmus of Panama as the Bolivar say, stated. The state of the Isthmus of Panama to the, to the Guatemala, they will form an association that the benefit position against in between the two big oceans will be important for the for the universe. He talked about different channels among the land. They will shorten the distance between the wars and strengthen the, la the links between the Europe and Asia. And they will bring of the four parts of the globe. Bolivar saw the importance of this connection between the oceans and there was the encounter between between the cultures and the importance for the commerce and for that same reason the united states in the monroy Roy doctrine developed the principle of haze in the ideal haze that it stated the united states had the right to intervene in everything that did with the corrosion the control of any interoceanic channel because that is related to the United States interest. Si, uh, the boy, the, uh, Hayes stated, stated in 1880, that to avoid the intervention of, of other imperialists, the United States need to assert the exclusive control of the, any interoceanic channel that was built in America. No only stated the that the European nation cannot come here, but the, these Europe nations cannot come here to erect autogos against the economic development of the United States. Any interoceanic channel was important for the United States interest, so they have the right of the justification to intervene, and that supports the idea of the participation of the United States in the separando Panamá, Panamá destruyendo la zona de Panamá quedó Indon and the and the nation Venezuela Republic. The dispute in that time it was the expansion territorial um, and we the Venezuelan people were intervening in reclaiming intervention. So Venezuela as the United States in many occasions so the United States intervened and helped have the Bomoro doctrine say to avoid the expansion of the foreign nation in America. And you rested in all this, this, this asking for help until 1895 under the state secretary sí. only. It is understood the importance, of the importance of the control of the... De que Inglaterra pudiera... River. So and the on the possibility of the England can can possess this river entrance is when the United States participate in the process, a process that today that we claim that illegitimate because it's a process where when it was created is a, a border that is not a border, no historical border that belongs to the Venezuelan people. Finally, we want to talk about of the Roosevelt Colorado. This is the one that has the more force have in the political, in the foreign policy of the red state, because the logic of this Colorado 
because the, any Latin American country of the Caribbean under, under influence of the United States would threaten or risk the United States instead of the corporation yes. or United States citizens in that place, United States reset the right to intervene and intervene in these countries. If this happens, this theory happens that Rubel design emerged in something that happened in 1902 when many banks, international banks, they were claiming the, the payment of the debt, the Venezuelan government ref, refused to pay, and the legend of the rest was if the countries our countries cannot comply with the compromises and they generate an instability that that conduce to to the presence of the European of foreign in our region, we have the United States have the right to intervene in this country. It's very dangerous this affirmation because first did not respect the national sovereignty of our countries and make clear that we don't have the capacity of, of nuestros propios pagos de cuenta porque our payments of death but additionally and it's a right to intervene when it's threatening the United States internet specific of the corporations of the citizens are threatened it's very subjective process so who determines who is bitten with this risk and why to give an opportunity to the United States to intervene on the disjustification on the, this principle of Roosevelt Colorado is that in 1905, United States invade Dominican Republic and, and start to intervene and control the money of the Dominican Republic on the logic that United States didn't have the right or the capacity to manage their finances. Using the excuses, they justify many interventions. When we see that many of these interventions emerge and on the possibility of the economic interests of the United States are threatened, and other interests, or other interest, economic interests of, of the foreign countries enter to the region. And the last corollary that is very important to understand and review is secular love on 1912. This is an important event that happened Eh, intenta comprar eh, eh, ter territorio en source. try to buy land land in in Baja in Magdalena in Baja California in México and the state of the state opposed to that action because it was the, 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 un territorio that it was en el continente. Y es así como este este grupo o de diferentes principios o colores has been added to the Monroe Doctrine y han ido además and have been how how the Monroe project is based in the economic interest of your state and how this interest territorios para utilizarlos a su propio beneficio, pero ahí sí hay un, un control político. El imperialismo es cuando en esencia una parte del mundo, en este caso, a model to, to take away the wealth of the working of the people. And it was through this rob of the wealth that many imperialistic nations, including United States in, the, in modern times, they've developed the industry, they advanced their economic growth, and they destroyed the manufacturing projects in our countries, including our Latin American countries, and the colonies become that produce um, raw materials and where the products that are elaborated from then are sell in our countries. And this is the imperialist structure, the certain 
parts of the world dominate the world economy. Uh, what called, that's structural imperialism, and that's what represent, represents the neocolonialism that we that we are struggling against today. Así que voy a hacerla de vuelta antes de darle la palabra a nuestro invitado de este momento. Eh, bueno, buenos días, noches, tardes, depende de dónde nos estén mirando, de qué parte del mundo. Aquí les habla Lucía Reartes de Argentina, desde la Escuela de Formación Política José Carlos María Tegui, que es una de las escuelas y procesos formativos que hacen parte de ALBA Movimientos. Eh, bueno, damos continuidad hoy al seminario Bolívar versus Monroe, Um, Let's continue with our activities, Bolivar versus Monroe, 200 years against imperialism. And the idea of this seminar and, and several activities during this year, is because uh, in December we uh, we go to, we will be celebrating 200 years from uh, of these. So this, this is serves to remember and to uh, update this situation between projects that we live in Latin America and since um, 200 years from 200 years ago. We are doing this with, with, with it, together with the Institute of Investigation, Institute Simon Bolivar, and uh, in this third encounter, in which Carlos and Guillermo that are in charge of the video and Carlos from the, from Institute, uh, the Simon Bolivar Institute, they brought here the topic that we were going to talk about uh, economic models, models of accumulation between these uh, two projects. To think of in the context uh, brought by Carlos from the consolidation of, of industrial capitalism, this uh, hegemonic England, when the United States starts to have a very dynamic role and starts to propose for Latin America, and, and we will see for the rest of the world, we'll see in the 20th century, to start to understand the vision of the work and dependency with the other peoples of the world. So in this first video, Carlos brought this perspective, and now we want to give the floor to Steve Elner, professor of economic history and the political science in the University of Venezuela, so that he can update this debate and um, in a, an economic uh, perspective, so we are going. He's going to analyze these two hundred past years, uh, also the situation in the international economies. That's still very um, actual. Once once Steve finishes, we are going to start and is. Uh, uh, a small debate, then let's take advantage of the, the questions that are going to arrive in, in, in the chat. So let's go in to give the floor to Steve. Thank you, Lucia. Thank you for this invitation to talk about something so important and so current 200 years after the the, the polit, polit, politicians in Washington, also the policy makers, they are divided, divided in about the moral doctrine, divided in what represents the Republican Party represented by the so-called neocons like Joe Bolton and Democrats that supposedly support a uh, soft line, um, uh, the soft line 
perspective. So the difference between the both lines, the hard line and the and the low line, is like uh, the the how the, the the same phenomenon of a represented by the good cop and the bad cop. They work together and they are on the same page. So, okay, the leadership of the Republican Party, along with some Democrats, is, uh, uh, the, the, let's like uh, um, with some Democrats, such, such as Senator Bob Menendez, and they have the same um, same position of Marco Rubio, of the Republican Party, uh, and they're strengthening the sanctions against Venezuela, Cuba, Nicaragua, and everyone says that Menendez in foreign policy is a Republican. And how can we explain that the Democrats allow that someone to this uh, Republican uh, gets uh, this so important position? So for something that's not new for Menendez, the, the Democrats have a very perfect excuse to replace it, him, but they do not replace him. The idea of the Demo that, that Democrats are different from Republicans in a foreign policy is, is not real. The difference is, above all, um, actions, not words. John Bolton was advisor, the national security advisor in the United States under Trump, and he said about the Monroe uh, Doctrine that in, in, under Trump, they, he was afraid, he was not afraid to use the phrase Monroe uh, Doctrine. But in change, on the other hand, Secretary of State John Kerry, who declared that the Monroe Doctrine was no longer the U.S. Uh, policy. But what, in fact, the United States was not renouncing uh, was saying that the United States would not intervene in the affairs of other countries, but he was going to do that together with their allies. It means that Washington renounces the uh, an intervention, uh, unilateral intervention, but not an intervention at, as intervention. Anyway, um, it was not easy because uh, under Obama, sanctions against Cuba were not um, no. sorry, were not lifted. Uh, Obama administration began to impose sanctions on Venezuela, and they announced that this intervention is was false. Under Biden, also Democrats, the uh, unilateral interventionism was uh, something constant. Now, with each exchange of, 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 of powers, and the White House was deaf to the um, pronunciations of Lula and others, other presidents. Some countries just uh, voted asking for asking for the sanctions to be lifted uh, last year sanctions were intensified so Kerry did not uh, lie when when he said it was not he did not say the truth because he said that the Monroe doctrine was not a uh, was not used in Washington. The strategy of Trump to recognize the Monroe Doctrine and in other measures failed. This policy has failed, so he, she, he has to change it, Be, not because of the sanctions, the policy of sanctions or the intervention and internal affairs was wrong. 
it was morally unjustifiable, unjustifiable but it, just because it failed. Now it allowed interventions in the, in the oil industry of Venezuela, in Repsol, in Spain, and also in Italy. But in under some conditions, one condition is that, that any gain for the Venezuela, uh, any profit for the Venezuelan game uh, has to be used to pay the debt of Venezuelan government. So this violates the, the national sovereignty. So in, in United States uh, po policy uh, was, uh, towards Venezuela has changed, has changed in, under Biden, but it's more hypocritical. I'm not a Trump's friend, all the contrary, but the tr but Trump's discourse, trust, uh, trust Trump's words uh, or message was to go against Maduro's government to establish um, the democracy, democracy, dem democracy in Venezuela. But Biden is not talking about democrat democracy anymore. His strategy is use sanctions to promote interests, concrete interests from the United States, not only economic, economic, political, but also geopolitical interests. For this reason, I say that it's more hypocritical because it tries to use the suffering of the Venezuelan people, not to get democracy, but to 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 serve the the interests of the United States. The news um, agency Bloomberg and other sources say that if Maduro changes his policy, his economics policy, policy in favor of the multinational um, uh, uh, companies, Biden is uh, willing to change some sanctions, not eliminate all the regime, but negotiate to negotiate. If Venezuela makes some changes in favor of the multinational companies, the United States will do some, will, will do some concessions. As per the political situation, Venezuela is uh, the Venezuelan. I'm sorry, the United States is very divided. There are some that are more aligned to the interests interests of the United States. Now we have the primary uh, elections in October. to elect candidates for 2024 and um, the opposition or the the, the called uh, so-called G4, the, the, the largest parties, more pro-American. Almost all candidates for the, these primaries are candidates from this group. Washington is supporting this sector of the opposition it's not very it's not has not a very favorable um view a few days ago Bernadette and Gutierrez and some uh, other author that um, was not happy about the, uh, the position of the United States because the United States is is uh, like married with the the most uh, rigid sector of the economy and the negotiations proposed with Mexico with Mexico are those um, sorry political and political Area, the declarations from Washington make clear that if Venezuela goes um, far from uh, from the, the the Ukrainian and Russia uh, war, is willing to lift the sanctions. It makes a relation with the war. In more global terms. Let's talk about imperialism. We, we have talked about imperialism uh, related to Venezuela and to the Monroe Doctrine that historically has been the justification, as Carlos documented very well, 
in historic moments and very different situations. This doc doctrine uh, was useful to justify the interventionism of the United States. There is no doubt that, that the concept of imperialism is also, uh, is, it can be applied today. It maybe it's more applicable today than in the past, but it's curious that this this word imperialism is not uh, is has disappeared from the speech of of today's people it, in com if we compare with uh, the 60s and the the cuban revolution and the mass mobilizations against imperialism in latin america massive uh, protests against the vietnam war of course has to do with uh, imperialism, these massive protests in the beginning of the 60s and the 70s. I participated in the, of this uh, massive uh, protests in the 60s until 1971. In 1990, there, there was an economist from India that wrote, wrote that nobody talks, almost nobody talks about imperialism today. But in the 60s and the beginning of the 70s, imperialism was the uh, place that the, the, was uh, occupied the most prominent place in the, this Marxism discussion. There are other writers that deny that the progressive uh, uh, governments, the Morales, the Maduro, the and others are really progressive, progressive governments. The same uh, writers do not talk about um, imperialism. They do not, not put in context this governments that they call, they, they say that has, have abandoned the progressive uh, flags. Specifically, they deny that imperialism has to do with acute problems in the political or economic areas or and problems faced by these governments. Uh, there's an activist very uh, well known from Uruguay that denied that the ouster of Evo Morales in, the, in 19, 2019 can be attributed to the invention, interventionism of the United States. And those people, that's had to do with the coup of the dark and, I'm sorry. However, the role of the United States in the house uh, of Evo Morales in the organization of the United uh, States the American states was uh, dominated by this. Part of the reason for for the imperialism of the United States had not received the attention that it deserved has to do with something that I call the many imperialisms the United States is just one imperialism country, imperialist country, but there is imperialism in China and Russia. Uh, defenders of these uh, many imperialisms seem the, the seem uh, uh, see the governments from Latin America, from different countries in Latin America, as progressive governments. They change. Well, there, there is a a change between one imperialism uh, with the other. So some authors justify the United States imperialism as um, they say that it's more benign than the uh, imperialism from Russia or from China. And uh, the analyst and academic photo emphasizes the importance of geopolitics in the discussion about imperialism, says that the policymakers in Washington do not talk about this. However, they see Latin America as a fundamental region from the strategic point of view for the United States. 
he refers to Virzhensky, uh, advisor of the national security under Carter, associated with the Democrats, De Democrats Party. And he said that the United States established his primacy as no no other country in story in history because the other hegemonic countries were threatened by uh, from war, from the 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 ocean or from the, the the land but the security of the united states depends on different parts of the isle is it's like an island the united states is like a big island Nobody's going to threaten the security of the United States. So for the policymakers in Washington, the government, progressive governments are in the process of uh, creating a breach that compromises the security of the United States. Uh, there's a decree, a famous decree from Obama that says that Venezuela represents um, a an, an threat for the security of the United States. A globalization in theory and in practice tends to hide the imperialist actions from the United States and transnational capital in the framework of the globalization when it transcends the state, nation state it seems to be um, a concept that that gives the idea of of nation state let's think about the first world war the famous work about imperialism written uh, written about the first world war that was an imperialism war uh, he said that the the countries, uh, the Euro European countries, uh, struggle to control the rest of the world. Theoretical from uh, theorics from the left argue that uh, said that the concept of nation state is disappearing, and a transnational state as the trade uh, world trade organization is in the process of replacing this uh, state nation concept so it's losing its meaning because it's coming the the, 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 mo the moment comes that there will not be will not have a united states uh, companies and the government will be impotent to, to face these monsters but they are talking about a very distant future on the long term, in the long term, and not in the medium term, not in the short term. State nations, um, nation states, uh, different nation states are not being uh, threatened by the tra trade organization. So the nation state is more powerful than ever because of this, we have the idea that the multinational companies that are, do not belong to a country do not adjust to the real, sorry, sorry, I couldn't get that. The same we can, can be said about the concept of many imperialisms, China and Russia someday will be transformed in imperialist countries adopting the the role that is being um, that today is the united states from countries of the south need a light now and not not only china and russia have been uh, reliable allies of several latin american countries uh, governments these uh, governments cannot get inside a discussion uh, about a future of a distant future 
all the military bases that are outside the territory of the 50 states of the United States. I'm not talking about Puerto Rico, it's a colony. Not talking about Guam and, and other others. I'm talking about the national territory of the United States. So there are 750 uh, military bases outside the United States. It is not equivalent to China or the case of Russia. The military presence is designed to protect its frontiers, not in the case of Russia and, and China and Russia. And its support, explicit support to the rest of the world is not, has no equivalent to the first uh, world war. When Lenin wrote his, first, his famous work about, um, wrote his famous work about imperialism. I mentioned this because writers from the left, also Marxist, uh, Marxism, uh, oh, left from Marxism that talks about imperialism of China compared with the what mentioned what was mentioned by Lenin, they had more friendly relations and uh, more cooperative relations with uh, a left orientation, like uh, Cuba, Bolivia, Ecuador, Nicaragua, Brazil, and Venezuela, and less friendly relations, but respectful relations with conservative uh, governments. It was very different of the European contest uh, in the times of the, the first, first World War. However, we can say that, oh, this, in spite of this respect for orientation among China and Russia, these conservative governments, at least in Latin America, not always respond in the same way, in the, with the same level of respect. For example, the case of Bolsonaro government in Brazil and those that were close to Bolsonaro accused China of uh, wanting the, to dominate the world and to be responsible for the uh, COVID pandemic. I am paying attention to my time and trying to conclude in my 25 minutes. The acknowledge of the imperialism of the United States as a as a source of contradiction in the world has two um, points that we have to take into consideration. One, in the foreign policy, the, those parties and governments, Russia, let's take Russia, for example, that faces the United States but do not represent a power for the socialism. R Russia is not a socialist country. And, and and takes uh, under some actions that are not really ethical, but it's not in the same category of the United States and, its ally and their allies. They have to highlight actions in foreign policy. And second, the critics, critics from progressive uh, governments like the, the Pink Tide, um, they have to be in it put in context their positive role in the fight against uh, anti-imperialism and against imperialism have, has to be emphasized. And lastly, the priorities, 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 we have to prioritize something that is very important for this strategy of the progressive uh, leftist uh, forces, especially how it's applied to Venezuela, to Maduro, and in the Cuba, Cuban case. We progressives have to uh, emphasize the importance of Maduro and to, to uh, teach um, something that's, that, that that can uh, 
live despite of all the, the actions against it. We can we we can say that Maduro is not. Um, it's not that he cannot be criticized. He can be, but we have to take the positive aspects of this government too. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Steve. Very good, your intervention and the elements that you brought here to us and to think about the monster from the inside. It's very interesting. And we have some questions that have been uh, appearing. I think that you have already answered some of them, but let's try to get to some of your ideas. We see a uh, international division of work that puts us as providers of byproducts. What are the consequences to, uh, to break this dependency circle and how to do that? Uh, the second, second question, the project of Bolivar uh, has advancements and retrocesses and how can we think about that in a context um sorry carlos is also here and also the the questions go to steve and to carlos and the third one is which are the what are the first uh, demands or the, the the main demands that we have to work in the popular projects to dispute the the economic plan I'm going to make some comments and Carlos will have his own, his own comments. The first question about, there, there are lots of, about raw materials, the theory that came from the end of the 60s and the beginning of the 70s in Latin America, it's important about this question about raw materials. The theory of dependency comes uh, as a result of a study uh, made by a clock directed by Raul Predish, an Argentinian economist that demonstrated that the topics of interchange, interchange between Latin America and others were unfavorable because the cost of the imports of products, um, products from capital machines and others that were, were, was more and more expensive and the raw material uh, prices were, were less and less expensive. So the, the, the breach between both were, it was uh, getting higher. This, uh, this uh, came from this uh, assumption that says that the prices of raw material go, went down, and this had to do about, about the uh, decision of the OPEP in the 60s to correct this problem. But the dependency took into account the, 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 um, the unequal interchange between the countries of Europe and the United States and, and the countries of the South, but, why the dependency theory comes um, comes in? It, it it came in before that, but in the sixties, it starts. It really starts at least in Brazil. Well, this was uh, first proposed in the sixties. 
in Brazil with Fos Santos, with Marini, with Frank, that taught in Brazil. Um, these three were the pioneers of the dependency uh, theory and Brazil was a pioneer in Latin America and in the, in the industrial sector. When Previs talked about the, said that the industrialization was a correction for development countries and with the industry countries would be able to correct this unequal interchange. And it was necessary to analyze internally what was happening in the, those countries. So to analyze the dependency, we have to analyze the external relation with the, but also the, the internal situation in a country. There's a fact that there are many countries that received lots of industrial capital Let's let's take the case of Ergatina. There was a very important industrialization that was uh, halted in the, this in the 21st second, but it re represents an industrialization. But under which conditions? I think this this analysis must go beyond from the Eclax uh, assumption that was very progressive at the time, but very important too. But we have to analyze also this the internal situation of each country, the structure in each country. And to conclude, because this we could talk about this uh, for much longer, but we. Maria this developed the concept of the super exports of super exports to understand the dependency. We have to analyze this. The, the forces of production, the labor class, and the fact that there is a super exploitation of the of the labor forces and when compared with development developed countries. I don't want to go further. Thank you. De la, incluso dentro del, del proyecto bolivariano, tanto en su versión original eh, impulsado por Bolívar como, como el proyecto bolivariano hoy, yo creo que tres cosas que serían importantes para defender precisamente, para garantizar eh, eh, esa soberanía general, está en, en democratizar la información, o sea, hacer la batalla comunicacional, la batalla de ideas, eso ha sido algo prioritario en lo que hemos estado tratando de hacer nosotros. Luego está, por supuesto, la, el reafirmar. Then we have, we have to reaffirm the sovereignty over resources within the Bolivarian uh, doctrine, the decree of the mines as a principal main source to guarantee the, the wealth that the, the soil is, uh, the undersoil is in the hands of the state and that education will come from there and also funding from other kind of, um, of growth. This is to reaffirm the sovereignty and employ the resources for the development. This is fundamental to have an integral sovereignty. And maybe it lacked in the first, uh, Revolution, uh, independentist revolution is the organization. We have to, to, to have, have it present today. If we all guarantee a more popular uh, uh, that participation in our processes, we will have the guarantee of some or more control and also that the people can hold the, 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 the One of the things that we are working with currently, and it's very important, 
uh, that using the resources that we have to grow and the structures we are building regionally within Telac. We are going to have a meeting next week. There is going to be a, a private space to talk about the development of science and technology, the, the joint uh, development. The region is taking it seriously for the first time. This is important for the resources that we are getting back. Um, we are retrieving them for the oil in Venezuela, for example, so that we can employ these resources in the building and to build science and technology so that we can be more less dependent on the raw uh, materials and we can be able to explore other possibilities. This must be done in a framework of integration as uh, the CELAC. And this is very important and may help us to ensure the sovereignty that we have uh, want so much to defend. I would like to say something about the third question about the, the social struggles or social fights. I think that it is important that the movement against the imperialism that must be the, the very wide. There are some sectors in the United States that want to compare the, the sectors from the right and they have some interesting uh, position about the, the war in Ukraine. I want to, to say that some time ago I had an interview, uh, an interview with um, an activist that dedicated many years of his life fighting against uh, journalism, sorry, against imperialism, especially um, against Venezuela. An article that I published in Rebellion, the magazine, it was a comment that I, I found interesting. This movement is a wide movement which is going to comprehend uh, people that support progressive uh, governments, but also other people. I make a distinction here. I think it's important to differentiate between um, uh, groups that th say that they are from the left and they di disqualify progressive governments. And at the same time, they say they're, they are anti-imperialists. Imperialists. They, but they do not use the word imperialism. If, if they do, they use it to criticize Maduro, Chavez, Lula, and etc. It's valid to criticize, but if it doesn't take into account this, the challenge that these governments have face, to talk about errors without putting them into, into the context is misleading. I think it's necessary to make a distinction uh, between a constructive uh, critis criticism and a position that I just mentioned. And the, and the comment that I thought it was very interesting and important, they finalize the movements, solidarity movements that exist in the United States and in all parts. I was impressed, Carlos and I was were talking about Canada. We were met in Canada about as part of a tour that I did, but Canada pro prohibited the entrance of Carlos, Carlos from entering the country in those in 2018. The, can, the, the, the amount of solidarity groups that emerged was impressive. If you analyze who, who, uh, who were these people, these activists, you will see that these are people that recognize 
that these governments are progressive governments and their motivation to fight is because they are against imperialism, but also because they want something better for their governments and for their people. The category that I mentioned before, the people that say, that say we are anti-imperialism, but I am so against Maduro, Lula, as I am against uh, uh leaderships from the right. You are going to see that these people are are not uh, part of the solidarity movement. So I, I want to make the distinction be, between the different kind of of criticism, a negative and and positive criticism. And I think that this this has progressed a lot in the, in these kind of movements since um, twenty eighteen. I can see a very important growth uh, of, in these movements. I can see that Guillermo is there. I don't know if you can say something else to the debate, to, you know, to contribute to the debate. Hello, how are you? How are you? How, how is everyone? Can you hear me? Yes. I was listening to the anti-imperialists, but also um, the the opposite case. The, the, I think I'm thinking about the environmental area, as the uh, if you think about this extractivism, someone. Some people that attack extractivism, for some reason, they do that uh, against the extractivism uh, as projects from the progressive governments. So the International Division of Work is a product of the, the 16th century of modern times. Uh, the fact that we have uh, some countries that are condemned to extract uh, resources to send to another part of the world to be to benefit from them. So we can think that this is something good, some or not. But the use the, the theft of the resources that are taken from one country and and to taken from one country and to sent to others. We cannot forget about the roots. There are very, um, there are thinkers that, that fantasize about this topic. In case of Venezuela, we cannot stop extracting uh, oil now because it's not the, the way of of uh, doing the revolution because we need to do that because we need to get uh, resources as a, to, to have a change in our civilization. So we, about what Carlos talk, talked about in the beginning about Bolivar because Bolivar established the property of the mines in the hands of the state uh, to use it for uh, the growth of the development in agriculture, the education of the people. So this is important when you have the discussion about the extractivism that we, ha we must look at the imperialism because it's not, uh, we, we cannot take the imperialism from the equation. It's a, a structure of domination that puts us in a position of take extracting resources to keep a certain level of development. We do not have to stop extracting oil, but we have to use the, the profits or the, the, the gains of these resources to get to the changes that we are proposing. In the case of Bolivar, when 
he proposed to give it that to education on the case of the Bolivari Bolivarian revolution where the social missions that use the, the, the money from from oil and they apparently knows that and attacks us uh, taking this side into consideration it prevents us to use the, ex the extraction of the oil to the good causes thank you thank you very much Guillermo, carlos steve it's an honor to have you here as speakers of comrades that are uh, giving your contribution well, we could take we could, could take hours and and we would not um, talk about everything we want to so let's keep on reflecting keep on asking questions we also have questions about oil extractivism all those uh, this, this has to do with all other countries and we have a lot to debate so this is a beginning a start a start of a debate for the organizations for the popular movements in latin america and all this is going to be in spanish and youtube and in english and the international assembly of the peoples this it will be there for as a material for reflection it can be shared also the materials presented here as the videos for example and others can be shared too and they invite us to think about what is happening and next uh, thursday we will have our fourth meeting we're getting to the end of the cycle we'll have more but we're going towards the, the end of this seminar thank you very much to be for all of you to be there and we go we'll continue next thursday thank you